G'day everyone, how's it going? I'm Brian and over the next few weeks or so, when I get time to do these, I'm going to do uh, some videos on best wildlife destinations. It's going to be like five of them that you've probably never heard of. Maybe one of them, maybe none of them. We've been to all of them, so I'm going to talk from first-hand experience. But I will say some of these are going back at least 10 years. So I'm going to put up some photos of just the general area, what we were doing, things like that, some of the wildlife. But it was way before I started getting into serious wildlife photography. So a couple of these, especially the earlier ones, like this one, the image quality, especially of the wildlife, wasn't top notch but it'll give you a bit of an idea so I'm going to start off uh, and this was actually one of the ones that I've always loved wildlife ever since I was a kid always had reams and reams and volumes of books on animals and would love watching Nat Geo and uh, Jacques Cousteau but uh, but this is really the trip that kicked us off of making sure that we did at least one or one or two wildlife trips a year amongst the other travels that we do to different destinations around the around the world but, uh, and it's the Bolivian Pampas. So, first I better say, and I've got my notes, so I'll be looking up and down a bit, so please excuse that, but uh, I can't remember this off by heart properly. So, what is the Pampas? So, the Pampas is the large area of flat, grassy land in South America. So it could be in different countries, but that's what the Pampas is. This is a large, flat, grassy, open area. And they often like to graze cattle in these areas as well because of that. Uh, so let's talk about where do Bolivian Pampas tours start? Well, they started at a town called Renabaki and there's accommodation there. There's uh, restaurants and things there, a small town. But you would start, that's where the tours leave from, like you will meet your tour company there. But it takes about three hours on decent roads to get to the Pampas. And you're going to go to let me see what's the name of the river i'll get the name of the river lately but you're heading for the river so this is the main thing you're going to do even though you're going to the pampas you're not mostly going to be walking around on the flat grassy open areas you're going to be cruising down the river and i've got the name down there somewhere i'm just going to remember i think it's called yakuma y-a-c-u-m-a -A river and that's where you're heading towards now before that you start at la paz so just be aware that uh, when you fly into the airport there at La Paz, it's called El Alto, basically the high. And uh, it's about 13,000 feet. So when you get off the plane, all of a sudden you feel yourself like, why am I struggling to breathe? That's the altitude. So be prepared if you're going into Bolivia. It's not really a problem when you get into Renabaki. It's down low. You don't really get that effect. But La Paz could knock you for six, that's for sure. So if you're heading in that direction, just be aware. And if you're even staying in La Paz, which is a little bit lower, about 11 and a half thousand feet than the airport. I was, you know, they, they usually got oxygen bottles <laughs> in the hotels that we've stayed in, just in case you, you need some extra oxygen for those not used to the altitude sickness. But just check if you're gonna look at doing this sort of thing, because currently I looked it up, so there was a, a, a company, airline called Amazonas, and I just looked them up, and we used them, it was about a 40, 45 minute flight from La Paz to Renabaki, across some of the most incredible landscape I've ever seen. You're on this high plane from the airport, and then you've got the Andes Mountains too, as you fly towards Renabaki, on the left, and then kind of in front of you as well. And it's kind of like that, you know, stark mountain range, not heavily forested or anything like that. And then when you come up over this, mountain range on that side and then as soon as you get to the other side it's just dripping with like rainforest it's crazy landscape i've never seen anything like it or anything change like that in such a short trip but uh at the moment i couldn't find any flights so check because i know people are still going to the pampas i've been on trip advisor so i know people are still getting there because the bus ride is about 14 hours now i know you can stop in a town on the way and that sort of thing but uh, it's just worthwhile checking there was another one another airline called tam which is like um, an air force airline there in bolivia that does some trips to rural areas but again i don't know firsthand because i'm not booking a trip right now so just check with the company to see if there's a way you can get there before you book anything so what is the accommodation like 
okay this is uh, in the pampas itself now there's two or three lodges there that i've just read about now we stayed in one called caracolas and that was run by Bala Tours. And I'll put a link in, it's just a general link with different tours and different companies that do these tours to the Pampas. So, ours is rustic. So you had different cabin styles at this Corollas Lodge. Now what's included is basically your tour, your meals. I'm not sure if water was, I think water was included and you know, two tours on the river. There was a time when we'd get out of the boat and went and look for anacondas, but you know, and you see other birds as well, but uh, it doesn't include alcoholic drinks, soft drinks, pop, whatever you call it, where you come from, or anything like that. But uh, as I said, your meals, it's all home style cooking out there, of course. So, but rustic. So you yeah, shared accommodation, there was accommodation with shared ablutions, and then we had our little cabin, which was basically an ensuite but it was like cold showers. Don't worry, if you're there in the Pampas, you're not gonna worry about that because it gets very, very hot. So, and, and your own flush toilet as well, but rustic's the word. Okay, uh, is it good value? Well, compared to a lot of tours, like you might get used to, like if you try to go to Pantanal or something like that, which are very, very expensive, um, the Pampas offers good value, so, a three day, two night Bolivian Pampas tour, depending on who you go with, started around 240 US dollars per person. And you can go and kind of do a group thing or you can do a private one. Again, it's just a matter of checking. We did the private one, which you know would have cost us a little bit more than, than that per person. And it can be combined with a trip to the Bolivian Amazon. For those who do not know, the Amazon rainforest goes, it's not just in Brazil, it goes into Venezuela, it goes into Ecuador, it goes into Bolivia, it goes into Peru, so it goes into Guyana, Suriname, uh, except, you know, and I think uh, Colombia. But it, it goes into all these countries. So there is the Bolivian Amazon, so a portion of this area. They also leave from Arenabaki, so you can combine it. They do have combined tours, Pampas and and. Bolivian Amazon tours okay they normally go for an extra couple of nights it's like five days four nights that sort of thing okay best time to go to uh, the Bolivian Pampas right so it's the dry season so this Pampas this kind of plain grassland when it's in the rainy season the river fills up and it'll just spill out into over the Pampas you know they still graze cattle in there, but you can imagine that sort of water where you see cows and, and gauchos going through where they're kind of like the horses are, you know, knee deep or whatever it is, you know, up to water. So you need to go in the dry season. And like just about most wildlife destinations, it's the best time to go and see wildlife because they, again, they all come down to the river. They don't need to disperse. And like those, those floods in the woods, so they go, 10 meters or more up from the river because we were down on the embankments either side could be 10 meters or so up so that's how high the river rises in the pampas so so that's june through to august i did check the kind of shoulder months to those so may and september they're also doable as well just looking for those ones with very low rainfall where the water is basically kept into the river does it get crowded in the bolivian pampas nope on our three day, two night trip there, because we were combining it with some other stuff, we were just in Bolivia, just traveling around a bit. So it, well, we saw one or two boats or something on the river with other tourists on them, like some young people. I think there was a, another sort of lodge with basic accommodation where there were some young people on a tour there. And, uh, but most of the time we had the river to ourselves. It's incredible, it is like, you're in the pioneer days, ex like you were exploring unknown areas. It's, it's absolutely incredible. So it's one of the other reasons to maybe check this out if you're in the region and, uh, and going and do a pampas tour while you're there. So let's get down to the brass tacks. Is there a lot of wildlife in the pampas and what will you see? Well, the pampas is literally teeming with wildlife. Yeah, as I said, spotting is mostly done from a longboat on the river. You're just kind of cruising along. 
and we used to play a game while we were on this, this boat. This is how much wildlife there is there. We would see how high we could count before we saw some type of wildlife, whether it was a, a reptile, a primate, or a bird. And I can't remember, from my memory, we, we, we couldn't get past 10. So literally every 10 seconds there would be something. And this would be over, say you go out for two or three hours, I can't exactly remember the length of time, on the river. That's how often you see stuff there. And uh, let's have a look at what you can see. Okay, so caiman, turtles, different species of monkeys, sloths. What else have we got? Capybara, if I didn't say that, capybara. Many, many species of birds, including raptors. But the party piece, and this is the name of the river, I was right, it was called River Yakuma, are the pink river dolphins, which we did see, and uh, they do give you an option to jump in and swim in the river with them. I'm not saying that I recommend that sort of thing, but uh, we did see them while we were there. So definitely the party piece, and it's mentioned in all the tours of seeing pink river dolphins. And uh, just one of the advantages of going to the Pampas, for instance, over the rainforest. It's just the ease of seeing wildlife because of the openness. If you've ever done jungle or rainforest and tried to spot things, it can be very, very difficult. So the Pampas, the viewing is very, very easy. So there you go. There's a wildlife destination that you may never have heard of. A lot of people go to Peru or they go to Pantanal, but a lot of people don't know about the Bolivian Pampas. So consider it. Anyway, it's been fun talking about it. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.